Good evening and welcome to the channel studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. President Putin has sent a clear warning to the West, do not allow Ukraine to use your long-range missiles to strike Russian territory. Moscow, he said, would view that as the direct participation of NATO countries in the war in Ukraine. Russia has drawn red lines before and seen them cross before. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer, who arrived in Washington earlier for talks with President Joe Biden, brushed aside the warning, saying Ukraine had the right to defend itself. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Office says the accusation by Russia that diplomats were acting as spies in Moscow is completely baseless. It comes as Russia revoked the accreditation of six British diplomats, accusing them of spying. Security analysts believe this could be a Russian punishment for the UK being seen as a cheerleader for supplying weapons to Ukraine. Obviously, relations between the UK and Russia could barely be worse. This is, I guess, one step towards the total cutting off of all diplomatic relations, ambassadors being sent home, and embassies closed and potentially even repurposed. But we're not quite there yet. It does seem to me as though the UK does, and always has, drawn a specific level of ire from the Russians. Kenyan activists have marched in honor of Rebecca Cheptege and other female athletes. The body of the Ugandan Olympic athlete, who died after being set on fire by her partner in Kenya, was received by family and anti-femicide crusaders ahead of her burial. Cheptege's family met with dozens of activists on Friday who had marched to the Mwa Teaching and Referral Hospital's morgue in the western city of Eldoret while chanting anti-femicide slogans. She is the fourth female athlete to have been killed by her partner in Kenya in yet another case of gender-based violence in recent years. China will gradually raise its retirement age for the first time since the 1950s as the country confronts an aging population and a dwindling pension budget. The top legislative body on Friday announced proposals to raise the statutory retirement age from 50 to 55 for women in blue-collar jobs and from 55 to 58 for females in white-collar jobs. Men will see an increase from 60 to 63. China's current retirement ages are among the lowest in the world. The funeral of Sven Gran Eriksson, the first foreigner to manage England's national soccer team, has taken place in the small Swedish town where he grew up. The service took place in Torsby, a rural town of fewer than 5,000 people near the border with Norway, and was attended by several hundred people inside the church. A softly spoken but determined coach, Eriksson guided teams in Sweden, Portugal, and Italy to major trophies in the 1980s and 1990s before taking on the England Job in 2001, managing stars such as David Beckham, with whom he formed a close bond. Ericsson announced in January that he was terminally ill with pancreatic cancer and spent much of the ensuing months reconnecting with many of the places and people central to his career before he died last month. Hundreds of people gathered hours in advance to catch a glimpse of Pope Francis while he visited St. Teresa's home and Catholic Junior College, his last events before departing Singapore to conclude his 12-day Asia trip. The 87-year-old Pope, who in recent years has suffered bouts of ill health, appeared in good form throughout the trip, maintaining a packed schedule and headlining more than 40 events. This was after he presided over a mass in Singapore's National Stadium. The mass drew tens of thousands of people to a venue that has also hosted performers, such as Taylor Swift, who played six concerts there in March. A CSX freight train has collided with a semi-truck transporting a military vehicle at a railroad crossing in South Carolina. The crash occurred when the low boy trailer carrying a U.S. Army howitzer became stuck on the tracks. Despite the severity of the incident, no injuries were reported. Witnesses described the crash as being like a bomb going off, with the train slamming into the immobile truck, resulting in significant damage. And that's your international news, around the world in 5. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.